So I thought I'd give you a little uh, look at the quail habitat and the quail. We haven't looked at them for a little while and I've made some changes. No jumping out, there's Quentin. So here we have a large tree that's got sand in it and there's a sort of little, it's actually a, a planter up on its side there as a, a little platform. And I have a, a Carex grass there, a live one, a real one. And then here I've actually got a couple of, these are aquarium plants, they're plastic. And I think they look quite good and the quail don't eat them, which is good because if they did I wouldn't be able to use them. But um, I've started introducing plastic plants as well as real plants because actually the quail just eventually demolish the real plants even if they're not meant to. So, you know, the, the K-Dex grass for example, they'll eat it, eat it down. And what I've tried to do is take grass out as it's looking a bit rough and then put new plants back in but it doesn't always work that way and if I just move up here <laughs> you'll see that one um, it looks very dead but um, hopefully I'll be able to bring it back to life again I left it too long in <laughs> with the quail so so yeah there we have uh, this side of the the run extension and quail they do like having cover so I figure that if I have quite a lot of plants then it will be good for their mental health as well as anything else, as well as their physical health really. Because they'll be able to, as I say, eat the, the real grasses and navigate around the plants and you know, play among the plants etc. <clears throat> While I'm here, if I just look down, I've got a little, it's just a little, you know, a typical bird seed container and in there this is a quail mix that I got online and it's a mixture of millet and other little seeds that um, are nice quail sized and they use that to snack on. We'll talk about we'll look at the quail themselves in a little while. Oh it's a windy day today. So if we just look in the next side of the, the run there's some lettuce they do like some lettuce in the morning and another Carex grass. That's Carol just going by. And there's Quentin. Hello Quentin. And then we've got this. Watch out. It's alright. This is, it's like a, a, it's actually an edible log that you can put in with rabbits and guinea pigs and things. But the quail don't eat it. Um, it's just again used as something to, to give them some um, stimulation in their environment. They have on occasion gone, if I just go in, in there, it's hollow, they have an occasion gone in there but when um, there's a lot of uh, the shavings filling it up they can't quite fit. <laughs> Another good thing about having all these grasses is there's little nooks and crannies for them to lay and actually that area there they quite often lay eggs in, I've just, in fact, I've just gathered them. And then in here it's much the same, there's some straw in a, a container and then some shavings. Oh, let you out. They they don't use that very often. They do like the, the daylight and the you know to be able to see around them even if they can't get out. And then here on the door there's just another one of these containers and this has got their um, quail layers pellets in. I've got another container in the hutch part of their their um, run that's also got the layers pellets in and these little pellets specifically for quail uh, and they have a high percentage of protein which quail need and they're little quail sized morsels. So we'll just close that. And here we come to their watering system which I'm glad to say they're using readily now. I've got two of these at rabbit water bottles and that's how they that's how they drink and it's it's working really really well. I was hoping someone was just going to use it there but 
No. In fact, actually, I've actually just put in some cucumber. They do love some cucumber as well, so that's a, a little treat in the morning for them sometimes too. Right, let's open up. Now here you'll see a combination of real and artificial plants. So there's another little grass that's looking a bit worse for wear. So I'll probably swap that out. And then here's some, some more aquarium plants and I've put them in, in earth in plant pots to make them look sort of realistic if you don't look too closely. And a one at the back there. And then I got this. Again, it's from the sort of reptile part of the, the pet shop and it's a a nice piece of wood that, if I just move this out of the way, it's sort of a nice shape and they could jump on it if they want to jump on it and go under it if they want to go under it and again just to, to give them some stimulation in their environment. And then there is the little tub with the holes that I drilled in it with the, the layers pellets in which they, they eat as well. And I've got a couple of, just a couple of uh, branches I cut from the garden from a fallen branch of a tree and at the back corner there they actually lay um, I got three eggs out of there earlier on. So that's their environment and uh, they're really enjoying it. I'm just trying to make it, I know it's just a it's a rabbit hutch, well quite a, a large rabbit hutch and a large extension and there's only five quail in there but I, I want to make it as stimulating for them as possible and as natural as I can do. So green ring there indicates that this little girl is called Carol and Carol is looking a bit moth eaten and that's because she seems to be one of Quentin's favourite ladies as I think I said in the previous video um, when the male quail mounts the female quail he hangs on to their feathers at the back of their head and um, quite often some of them are pulled out if either he's a wee bit rough or they're a bit un responsive <laughs> and if he if he uses them mounts them more often than the others so poor little Carol seems to be one of his favorites now I do have a ratio of one male to four females so it should be absolutely fine there shouldn't be a you know the net shouldn't necessarily be over over mating with any individuals but I think maybe Quentin just has some preferences Let's go around here again, see if we can see some more. Of course, the more plants there are in here, the, the more difficult it is to see them, but I don't mind that. I want them to have a nice environment. Oh, orange, that is Carol. And they, so that's Carol there. She also gets quite a lot of attention, so she's also looking a bit moth eaten. There's Quentin. Yes, you're the man. You're the man, aren't you? Oh, don't come out. Hey, little Quentin. He's not as tame as the others, but he's not too bad. Oh, oh, shit. Oops, excuse my language. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want them to jump out because everything in this... <laughs> oh, I apologise for my language. Everything wants to wants to get quail. Um, cats, crows... Even the chickens would have a go, so um, I need to be very careful. <laughs> I can't believe I swore there in camera. I might cut that out. Whoops. So yeah, we don't really want them to, to escape. Fortunately, the times that they have jumped out, quite often they just they think, oh, I'm out, what, ha what happened there? And they sort of stay still and I'm able to grab them. Well, I had one situation when I think I was holding Carol and I was holding her I'll just shut this door a second. I was holding her sort of just about here and she went bloop, just like a bit of soap out my hand and flew right over the deck over onto the patio beyond and I was like, oh my God. And I ran round and she was just sitting there going, oh, what am I doing here? So I just grabbed her and, and popped her back in. But oh my goodness, it does give you a fright. As you can tell from my expletive. Right, so there's Kay Katie who's... Um, got a white leg band and she's meandering around. Now what you're seeing here is sort of perturbing me a bit. Just sometimes in the morning, usually when I'm just going for the first time, 
and occasionally through the day you'll see them sort of going round the perimeter as they're doing now as if oh they're wanting out but actually as I say when they, they jump out they sort of stand there going oh what am I doing here and I'm, I keep saying to myself have I not given them a big enough environment now if I was someone that was keeping quail purely for eggs and or meat I would actually have a lot more density well I personally wouldn't but people that keep them for um, eggs or meat for it, more commercially if you like um, they really they ram loads of them in a in an environment such as this and well I don't know probably tens of, of quails would be in the setup that I have here maybe 10 20 even 30 I think um, so it's not I don't think I've got too small an environment for them although I certainly wouldn't condone having you know dozens of or tens of quail in this sort of environment because I'm keeping them as pets with the uh, eggs being the benefits of it but um, I do worry when they do this is it not a big enough environment but I watch videos of other people and some people obviously have you know bigger bigger runs sort of aviaries for the quail and I look and I see the quail doing it there as well I see them sort of occasionally running around the perimeter and I suppose that's telling me that it doesn't really matter the size of the, or it potentially doesn't matter the absolute size of what you're, where you're keeping them, that um, they might always be looking for more, or they might always just, this might just be a habit, they are liking, you know, wanting to see the environment that they have, you know, and where, where, it, where it ends, and maybe almost like patrolling the perimeter so that they know where they are, um, environment is and where it starts and where it ends so if anyone is experienced of keeping quail and watching this video I would be very interested to hear what your thoughts are on this behaviour this sort of not all the time absolutely not but just occasionally having this little run around jumping up and down and looking at the you know patrolling their their perimeter is there anything I can do about this is it just the behaviour of these birds because they are game birds they are quite you know not necessarily the most tame of birds when it comes to domestication. Um, I just want to make sure the environment's as great as I can make it for them. If that means I need to add on to the setup I have, I will do that. If it, if I need to do put other things in here, I will do that. But um, I just want to make sure that um, I'm giving them the best environment possible. Which is why, you know, I have all these plants and bits and pieces in here so uh, and it might even be that I've overdone it with the with the plants is there not enough space for them now that I've got these plants in here should I take some of them out so that they can run about more in the middle but to be fair some of these are quite new so uh, the plants are quite new so they have had more space than this um, up until very recently so yeah here's the girls in Quentin uh, I just wanted to give you a little look at them and show you the environment that I am evolving for them as time goes on. If you've liked this video please give me a thumbs up. Can I do a thumbs up? Do a thumbs up! And if you haven't already subscribed I'd love for you to subscribe to follow me in my quail keeping, chicken keeping and gardening journeys. But for now I'll say bye bye!